Hello, uh, my name is Phoebe, I'm sorry, <laughs> this is Ro Rosemary Wilson. Um, I am going to be doing some systematic desensitization with my client today. Um, she has a fear of snakes, um, which is a type of specific phobia. She developed it while she was in graduate school um, that somebody hid a snake inside her desk. It was a non-poisonous snake, but ever since then, she's been terrified of it. Her field is uh, marine biology, and she works in the zoo. Um, she's been referred to me by the HR at the zoo. She previously this did not interfere with her life, because although there was a snake building, a herpetarium, it was not nearby. But now they moved it so it's right near the marine mammals. So she has been experiencing a lot of difficulty coming into work um, and while she's at work she's had some panic symptoms and stuff so um, with the help of Jello, the non-venomous non snake here, uh, we are going to work through some systematic desensitization using deep breathing exercises and uh, I will be periodically checking in using the subjective units of distress. Um, usually, well, some places say that systematic sensitization does not use that, but there has been research suggesting that particularly with in vivo exposure, using uh, units of distress, uh, feedback with the client um, can help them, particularly because there is the risk with in vivo exposure of them becoming just so frightened that they want to drop out of the treatment. Um, and uh, research also indicates that it's important, based on the client, to tailor the treatment um, to fit the client. Um, some clients, for example, it might be such a strong fear that uh, just the image, just the image is going to be enough for them because they may not ever encounter um, a Komodo dragon in real life. I, I don't know. Some of this may not make sense. The story of why this is such a relevant fear uh, in her life, I, I think is a bit more credible because of the whole working at the zoo thing. Um, but how she could have gotten through graduate school with an animal phobia, um, it doesn't make sense, just aside. Um, anyway, uh, so Jello here is um, a non venomous tree snake. Uh, he lives at the herpetarium, and I, with the assistance of some of the herpetarium people, um, have, I have a um, place that he lives, so it's called Cage. Um, and I'm going to carefully position him so that his face is away from um, our client, uh, my client, Phoebe Smith, so that she's not being directly confronted. During our, um, this is our third session. During our previous sessions, uh, we have discussed snakes. Um, the word itself, snake, um, has become a feared uh, thing for her, uh, so it is just seeing the sign of a snake, um, and, and that is a significant problem um, because of her work at the zoo and not being able to walk past the building that just has the sign of the snake out, outside of it. Um, she's also afraid, even if the snake is not attacking her, um, that just the knowledge that they are, you know, within the same mile as she is, is a frightening thing for her. So, um, so far the Therapeutic Alliance has uh, been very um, strong. Uh, she has indicated that with some of our initial discussion of the word snake, for example, and an exploration of her feelings. She's indicated that she has not gone above the threshold of 
anxiety. Um, so I've been able to uh, you, um, she's been relaxed enough. I'm going to pause this. Um, the snake will go in uh, his snake tank and then um, Phoebe Smith is going to come in. Um, okay. <laughs> okay.